What's the word, y'all? So this morning I woke up and I told myself, this is going to be the first day of the NBA season that I don't watch any basketball, right? Since the opening night, my schedule goes, you come into the seat at 5 o'clock, you watch basketball till a little past midnight, you record a video, you edit the video, upload the video, then you go to bed. You know what I'm saying? So today was the day I was like, you know, we were going to chill with my fiance, which is weird to say aloud, but it's official. Um, and not really worry about basketball. Well, she went to bed a little bit early, so that allowed me to watch, like, what, the last five minutes of OKC versus Lakers? Yeah, I'm so happy that happened. I'm um, not, not the ending of the game, but the fact that I got to watch the ending of the game. Like, Shea Gibbs Alexander, we all know this, super bad man. To pull up from the low goal with a minute to go early in the shot clock, up by three, ridiculous. Paul George would say that's a bad shot. Um, but it went in, so it don't really matter. And just the ending of this game, is, it was just so amazing. Like, I, like, I always say this. Whether you love Russell Westbrook or hate Russell Westbrook, you got to admit, he is an entertaining player to watch. I will miss Russell Westbrook when he retires in 40 years. You know what I'm saying? But that's all the basketball I consume today. This video is supposed to be about shining the light on some players that you may not even realize is having a really good season. You know what I'm saying? Some lesser known under the radar type players, right? I don't want to spend this episode talking about Jimmy Butler because he's better this year than his previous years or Paul George because maybe he's not getting the media buzz even though he's having a great season. But I wanted to go even deeper. I, I made a tweet to ask people on Twitter who are some players that are not getting a lot of recognition and we're going to mention some of the people in those tweets. But there was one player, oh no, no, two players that are the real reason I'm making this video, but we're going to have more than just two. Let's start off with person number one, okay? Um, this player, I, I didn't even really know existed until we got to Summer League. That player is, is Herb Jones. Herb Jones was drafted out of Alabama this season. I found out that he was a part of that, that Colin Sexton Alabama team that ended up having to play three on five. Well, Herb Jones got ejected from that game because he was ready to scrap with the people in Minnesota <laughs> because there was some tension going on. He got ejected and eventually made his way to the league. Now, Herb Jones came into this regular season, first game of the year, he barely even played. Then Josh, um, Josh Hart went out with an injury, and then now a guy that they drafted in the second round to be like this defensive specialist, maybe he has an NBA career, maybe he doesn't, is now propelled into the starting lineup, and he started his first game of his NBA career as a starter was against my Chicago Bulls, where I was in attendance. And I watched him very d diligently first of all because he didn't have any accessories on and he looked like a created player that didn't have no VC but secondly because he was playing amazing defense on some of the better isolation players in the league with the Chicago Bulls when he was switched on to DeMar or switched on to Zach Levine and in that moment watching that game I was like I gotta keep my eye on this Herb Jones guy because I think he's gonna be a really good defender and God, he's been very good. Now, he's a 23-year-old rookie, so he comes in pretty old. He late bloomer type. But I want to show y'all some footage of this guy, Herb, clamping up some of the better players in the league. NBA, if you're watching this, please don't 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 copy strike this, baby. Let me just let me just have this. Just a little bit. Just a little bit of footage. That's all I'm asking. Um offensively, you don't don't actually don't even ask about his offensive capabilities. He is he is here for defensive impact only. Y'all know if you've been around the channels for a long time, I am a sucker for a great defender. I'm, I'm one of those dudes that will take defense over offense majority of the time. And that's why Rudy Gobert is one of my favorite centers in the league. And he has been for a very long time. That's why Luke Dort is very high on my some of my favorite players. Because if you can get down to the nitty gritty and stop an opposing team star player, that is a real gift. Because you got to remember, these players in the NBA are the greatest scorers in the world. So when a guy like Herb Jones is guarding Julius Randle, who just was an all-NBA player and was the most approved player of the year and held his own, I like I, I can't help but to be impressed. This dude was guarding college players. Now, he has a super thin frame, but he's long, he's lanky, and he plays very smart on the defensive side of the ball. The last couple games, honestly, his offense has you know, looked a little bit better, but they don't ask him to do anything more to, than to guard the best player on the opposing team. And he does that. Julius Randle's a bruiser. He's going to use his body heavily. You see how skinny this, this young kid is, and he held his own against Julius Randle. And it, <laughs> I know J Julius Randle's just a guy for this one, but look, now he's, he's guarding Evan Fournier, gets over the screen, and prevents Evan Fournier from getting a clean look. That's really good defense from a player that has played, what, seven NBA games at this point? Really solid. Now, yeah, it's not a ton of super bright spots when it comes to the Pelicans. It's right now for me when I'm watching them is Herb Jones and Valanciunas looking really good. Everything else is up in the air. But shout out to Herb Jones. Let's move on to our next player. So the next player is on the Minnesota Timberwolves. And you see the names Carl Anthony Towns, Anthony Edwards, D'Angelo Russell. You might think elite offense, terrible, terrible defense. Where so far this season, the defense has been top 10 and the offense has been bottom, bottom seven, bottom seven-ish. 
And a lot of the reason why the defense is top 10 is because they have a guy named Josh Okogie, who we like, but I'm not focusing on him. But it really is Jaden McDaniels, another lengthy, um, th thin wire frame dude, just like Herb Jones, that is known for his defensive impact. And so far this season, somebody told me this on Twitter, so I'm happy I asked this question. Let me give you, my, give you your credit, my boy. So I have not fact-checked this stuff, by the way. It's on Twitter, so it must be true. Am I correct? Okay. Um, it actually comes from Ant All Star 2020. My boy, my boy is starting a campaign to get Anthony Edwards in the All Star game, but he's also starting a campaign to get Jalen Noel more PT. Um, so he mentioned that he kept Christian Wood and Chris Middleton and Kill Alexander Walker. Um, to, to very bad games, which is a variety of player. Nikhil Alexander-Walker is like a smaller, thin guard. Um, Chris Middleton is one of the best ISO players in the league, and Christian Wood is, is literally a power forward center. He was able to guard all three of those players and make them have tough nights. He's top 10 in defensive rating, and at one point, he was keeping players below 30% field goal percentage in the league, and that's second behind Bam Adebayo. NBA, please let this go. Um, is this account just named NBA Defense? Oh, do, did they just get a new subscriber? So now this is McDaniels guarding um, um, uh, Aaron Gordon, defends him well, then calls a miss for Michael Porter Jr. This is him guarding another lanky player, and that is Brandon Ingram, getting all up in the sauce, nothing's going on. On the baseline, hand in the cookie jar, he's all over the place. Uh, nothing easy. Christian Wood, where are you going? This guy, he blows up plays like no other. You know what I'm saying? He has very good instincts, very quick feet for a guy that's listed as like a power four type dude. And you can see even here, he's guarding. He he, he has so much versatility. Now, Jalen Green is a rookie, but that is a guard. And now he's guarding a small forward here. Now he gets a steal on a center. There's a lot of versatility here. Here's a Chris Middleton highlight. Chris Middleton thought he got the step. No, you did not. I would love for the NBA to just allow me to watch more NBA footage, but they definitely copy strike a lot of these videos. Um, when I do things like this. So shout out to Jaden McDaniels. And lastly, now again, some of these players are going to get talked about more than others, but it's Matisse Thibault. I mean, he made all defensive team on coming off the bench last season, so it's not a surprise to mention him as one of the greatest defenders in the league. But again, just the fact that he is all over the place and, and passing lanes, his anticipation is probably the highest in the league by far, where he it looks like he's seeing plays three steps ahead. I remember back in the day, NCAA football, they used have like this quick time effect where I used to play like safety or corner and you can slow down the time when the quarterback throws the ball to get an interception. Matisse Stiebel has that in real life. He's a real life superhero with the way he slows down time to get steals and stuff. So shout out to Matisse. Here's a quick rapid fire one. It is Al Horford. It's something about him putting on that green that elevates him. Um, he's having one of his best years in a very long time. He's 35 years old. And he was he was like leading a league in blocks going into tonight. And again, I didn't watch tonight's game, but I did see them as a whole win against the Miami Heat. I got to go back watch that footage. Um, but he did sell me on today because I took the over on his rebounds at eight and he had seven. So I'm very disappointed, but happy to see Al Horford starting off at least hot. Another player that is old that started off hot is LaMarcus Aldridge. He's third on the uh, Brooklyn Nets as far as points per game at 12 points per. And that's really solid, man. To think that this man was basically out of the league and retired just a couple months ago to get cleared to come back and play basketball and to be playing at this rate is really good. Next player is Carmelo Anthony. I don't really have to talk about it. He's on America's most talked about team in the LA Lakers. But another player that was basically out of the league. Remember just two, three, was that three seasons ago? Um, he got waived or released by the Houston Rockets. And a lot of people thought that was over with for Carmelo Anthony. And so far this year, he's in conversation for six men of the year. Now he is behind like Tyler Harrow and a few other dudes, but he has been super impactful. Even today, I didn't get to watch the full game, but I saw that he might have been their second, third best player again tonight. So shout out to Carmelo Anthony. Another player is Desmond Bain. Uh, the Memphis Grizzlies made some moves this offseason to allow Desmond Bain to, to flourish. I think majority of people that watch college basketball knew that Desmond Bain projected to be a good NBA player. But a lot of people questioned what his ceiling was be because he was an older he was an older guy coming into it and his wingspan was minimum. Um, <laughs> the man got minimum wingspan, which means in 2K terms, he can shoot the heck out of the ball. Last year he shot 41% from three. This year he's, he's shooting 40% from three on higher volume. Um, so I don't know what the ceiling of Desmond Bain is, but it's crazy that he fell all the way down to 30th considering everybody knew he was going to be good. At the end of the day, there are people that dra that were got drafted before him that will never be even close to the rookie version of him. A lot of teams out there drafted for potential instead of like a player that they know can hoop. And Desmond Bain can real life hoop. There's a few more before we get out of here. This one is from Frederick. He said, Seth. He will forever be in his brother's shadows, though. Frowny face. 
which for the most part is true. When, you're, when your brother is one of the greatest players of all time slash the greatest shooter of all time, yeah, you might be in the shadows just a little bit, but he has carved his, his, his way to be way more than Stephen Curry's brother. Because this year, I mean, he's always been, for the last couple of seasons, the most efficient three-point shooter in NBA history, but his volume is going even higher. I was listening to No Dunks, and I think this was a day or two ago, and somebody said he is a lesser version of CJ McCollum because he's way more than just a three-point shooter, but now his mid-range game and his off-the-dribble game is better than it was like two, three years ago, which is true. I never really thought about it in that perspective, but for sure, you know, his ability to create his own shot is 10 times better than what it was just a few years ago, and right now, I think he's third on the team as far as points per game, and he's been one of the main reasons why they've been able to still have a really good offense because you cannot leave him open and if you 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 glue to him he has the he has the ability now to make a couple moves and get the open mid-range DeJounte Murray is a player that I think has been underrated for a very long time um and this year he's putting it together even more than others it's just the fact that he plays in San Antonio and they don't win many games but a lot of the games I've mentioned in yesterday that they play um, are super fun and they just blow it in the last couple minutes and one of the reasons why they stay close in these games is DeJounte Murray he can't he said in his postgame interview a few nights ago that like I don't really care about my individual stats because we're losing and that's the right mindset to have but his individual stats look really good um he learned a lot from DeMar DeRozan you know what I'm saying? He played with DeMar for, what, three seasons or so? And he realized, oh, the mid-range game should not be dead. And DeJounte will take that mid-range jump shot, for sure. He played with Rudy Gay and DeMar DeRozan for a couple years. He knows that mid-range jump shot can be lethal if you learn it. And he has learned it. His vision is really good. He was one of the youngest, if not the youngest, player to ever make a defensive, um, defensive team. And his defense may not be as up to par with that, when, you know, when he was year two or whatever it was. But it's still a positive defensive impact for DeJounte. And then lastly... Mo Bamba, Mo Bamba, listen, when Mo Bamba was in the draft, he was my favorite prospect. And that lets you know that I no team should ever hire me first at all, but definitely don't hire me to evaluate talent because he was my favorite player in the draft because I was thinking he was the future of the NBA center. Protect the paint, shoot threes. Protect the paint, shoot threes. I don't need you to do nothing else. And then the first couple years of his career, he couldn't even really get a lot. Now, he did spend time injured and stuff, but he struggled to get playing time on a bad team. Now, yeah, he was being behind Vucevic, who was an all-star, one of the few bright spots for the Minnesota, I mean, for the Orlando Magic for the last couple of years. But he really struggled to even hit the rotation. And that was a little bit scary. There was one point where, where they were playing like Kim Birch over him. And Kim Birch is good, but for a team that was already losing 50 games, let's just throw out that young fella, right? Nah, they wouldn't do it. He didn't earn his minutes. And I kind of messed with that. Well, this year, there's, no, there's literally nobody there. So he's going to have to get some minutes. And he looks like a mode of the player that I really liked. He's been able to sit in that corner, hit his shots, protect the paint. And he looks like a good NBA player. You know, it, it, like, I am learning more and more every single year that the center position is hard to adjust to. Especially for a one-and-done player that was raw he was pretty raw coming out of college it took him what three years to become an okay nba player he's only 23 years old at this point so who knows where he can be at 26 but it's just a good sign uh, teams need to start to be way more patient with these younger centers or just don't draft them fifth overall if you're gonna have expectations in year number two just don't draft them that high there are so many more players that deserve love um but this these are just the ones that i thought they were very interesting. Let me know in the comments like some other players that you believe need to show, show more love. Like, there are other players that we've talked about. Like, Franz Wagner, we talked about him, like, three episodes ago. So, you know, players that I already talked about is underrated or underappreciated. I don't want to bring them up again. But these are just a whole new set of dudes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'll see y'all tomorrow, probably, if not the day after.